Hello. Hope I'm audible. Uh, the hand also. Okay. So very good afternoon. Thank you for everyone uh, for joining. Uh, so my name is Ajit Narayanan. I'm the founder CEO of a company called Pinakasha Computing, based in India, Bangalore. So today I'm here to speak on uh, Starling X. So uh, the title suggests is just an introduction. So we tried our hands on with the Starling X and just wanted to share some insights uh, with all of you so that we also learn. Probably you, I, I, I can expect more experts of Starling X in the audience. So we want to get back something. So it's like a growing thing. So once again, thanks for the opportunity. So just a quick introduction of the company before I just jump into the things. So Pinacasta Computing, as I said, it's a Bangalore, India-based cloud company. So we predominantly work on OpenStack and uh, Starling X. So that's what we do. So if you look at, we have a lot of cloud platform called Pinacasta and we work with our own distributions. So that's a long-term roadmap for us. So here today, I'm just talking about Starling X. Uh, so before starting, I just wanted to start with two questions. So how many of you have already experienced working with OpenStack? And second, how many of you are already aware of uh, Kubernetes? Both? OpenStack and Kubernetes? Yes. Both. So it's very easy. You can understand quickly. Just the thing is, you just need to understand the perfect use case of where we use Starling X and where we opt for just OpenStack. And you get the picture. So, uh, as you know, the OpenStack is uh, open source cloud software which we already are aware of and which helps us in creating a cloud platform uh, for predominantly virtual machine based workloads. Okay, and uh, yes, definitely it has add on services like Magnum, which brings in Kubernetes as a service, but remember it is on top of the virtual machines which you create. Okay, now coming to Starling X, if you look at the use case, right? So where the Starling X uh, gets the importance is, the use cases where latency, bandwidth, security, and connectivity actually matters. So th those kind of uh, environments, industry verticals are transportation, manufacturing, video, where latency, because they might be having a lot of factory assembly lines and uh, supply chain all going together, which in which they cannot actually compromise on latency. So they want uh, the perfect use case for them is having an edge cloud with a very low footprint, having uh, their applications, everything running on a low put, uh, footprint at the edge, and then probably having a central cloud for managing uh, managing their. Uh, locations geographically which is uh, in different areas. So this Charling X uh, is a perfect use case for such a scenario uh, where latency, bandwidth, security and connectivity issue uh, really matters. So you can just look at the industry verticals which are uh, uh, perfect for this. Now, going to the Starling X architecture, the very first question when I asked uh, how many of you have already worked on OpenStack and how many of you have already worked on Kubernetes. So if you look at the architecture diagram, you can easily quickly understand what is going on. So where you can see how Starling X started is they have a ready uh, ISO image, which is a very minimal operating system based on Debian. Uh, which is uh, having a very uh, simple kernel. Uh, only the components which is required to run OpenStack and Kubernetes is there. So that makes it very lightweight operating system. On top of it, you have a flock, uh, flock of services. This is called flock services. 
and you can uh, you can easily uh, relate yourself to all these services: Horizon, Keystone, Docker, which is the uh, runtime engine, Calico for networking, and all those things. Okay, so you can easily do. Now, on top of it, uh, what is built is different services which can help in managing the host, that is a physical host. Uh, you have uh, fault management within this uh, service. You can manage this whole software. You have configuration management, service management, everything. So what you see here is the Kubernetes cluster, which is created on the bare, bare metal. And you can see on the side, the OpenStack also is built on the Kubernetes itself, where uh, you will have the scalability for the OpenStack services as well. Now, going to the deployment options, you can quickly see this uh, image. I think we already had a Starling X uh, session half an hour back, which was little bit in detail but this is introduction so you can see what are the different deployment options so when we start learning the very first option which we opt is all in one wherein you can you need only one server you can install it and see how it works the only thing you have to do is you have to download the ISO ISO file from the Star Linux uh, mirrors and then try to install so when you install first thing is uh, you install all the components, uh, you bootstrap, and you it, it is a kind of hyper-converged format. You can see the control storage and the compute nodes, compute all the worker nodes, uh, all, all three services in one node. So that is the simplest way to start, uh, like everybody starts the same day. And then you can understand the more uh, uh, bigger, kinds of deployments, wherein the second one is the duplex deployment, where you have two servers minimum, which will have high availability of the service. Then the third one is the, uh, you can call it as a non-converged format, wherein you have separate set of controllers, nodes, and the separate set of storage nodes, and separate set of compute nodes. So you can, based on the requirement in the edge, you can choose what, how much of footprint, uh, hardware footprint do you want, and accordingly choose the what kind of deployments you want. The fourth is the uh, distributed cloud environment. So what we are talking about is geographically distributed uh, use case. So definitely we want, uh, say it, uh, if it is a factory, we want uh, things to be managed centrally. So in that case, we will have this uh, distributed setup where we have a central cloud. From central cloud, we can manage all the sub clouds or the edge clouds from the central control. So this kind of arrangement is called a distributed cloud. So you have in each of these deployment models, you have uh, hardware. I mean, uh, hard limitations of how much of uh, uh, server, how many servers you can use. You can see that is mentioned. Next is the hard hardware footprint. So this is a kind of the table which shows a kind of um, a minimal hardware which you may require to start with. So if if you want to start, uh, say a control node, the controller node should have minimum of two servers. This is we are talking about duplex setup, and uh, uh, storage nodes can go from two to nine and worker nodes can go to 100, 2 to 100 nodes. So you can see what is the minimum CPU, memory, and uh, data disk and always disk is required, and also the interface cards. So we have a set of networking to be done. Um, uh, probably you can just have a look at the Starling X uh, documentation to understand what would be the network architecture design before we Go ahead with the deployment. So this is the uh, actual scenario which I was explaining. This is the distributed cloud, wherein you have the Starling X uh, uh, 
created as a central cloud in your headquarters and then you have uh, geographically uh, distributed sites where you want to manage the edge cloud probably you can uh, think of uh, uh, factory assembly line a supply chain or uh, uh, robotics or whatever whatever comes in the edge uh, which you need compute resources and if you look at uh, these uh, sites these are autonomous sites so even if uh, this connectivity is cut off with the central cloud these edge clouds can operate on its own there is no dependency the moment you get back the connection yes your central cloud can uh, get the details back on the sites it's managing so the central cloud uh, has all those features of configuration management host, man uh, host management so you can start with a one cloud central cloud and you can remotely deploy these edge it sites so how that easy is uh, starting x uh, if you had attended the previous starting session uh, it clearly uh, shows how the life cycle management is happening in the starting x from the central cloud uh, the complete uh, uh, process was explained in detail and uh, Yeah, this is the uh, perfect diagram which you can easily understand uh, when I said uh, it's a combination of uh, OpenStack and Kubernetes. So uh, OpenStack is again optional. If you want uh, to run a VM-based workload, CS, you can deploy a, uh, OpenStack. Uh, and if you install OpenStack, again, it, is, <laughs> it will be on top of the Kubernetes cluster which is created on this so I'm not sure how much uh, you can see the diagram so if you see this is a starting X and uh, you can see all the flock services everything here and the Kubernetes will be deployed uh, as a cluster on your nodes your nodes and uh, this Kubernetes cluster will host your OpenStack services as well so uh, container, you'll have the OpenStack services as a, a containerized uh, plane, uh, which will give it uh, more scalability and elasticity. Okay. So if you look at uh, this thing, the first diagram, Kubernetes for uh, orchestration of container workloads, and it has its own Docker image registry. Obviously, runtime engineers Docker. And for the networking layer, uh, scalable networking layer, Calico is used. And the storage backend is always Ceph. Okay. There are two different uh, ways you can deploy Ceph itself. Ceph as in, uh, in the, how many of you use Ceph? Yes. So it is pretty easy. It's just a combination. You just, uh, everything brought in together and made it an uh, easier way to deploy. That is the uh, idea of Starling X. So a zero touch provisioning, uh, that's what we call it, right? So that is one thing missing with OpenStack, uh, where we don't have a zero touch uh, uh, deployment tool. We have, but still it is in command line or something. So here it is a uh, little simpler just uh, you, how you uh, install any operating system, you can install Star Linux um, uh, controller and then additional nodes uh, are just, you just allocate the role for it, either storage or worker, accordingly it will change its personality, that's what uh, personality is the right word they use. So uh, sequence of commands, yes, your uh, Star Linux is up and running and the way, the way how you want to deploy whether you want to deploy it as a uh, distributed 
कंप्यूटिंग एनवायरनमेंट और एज एन इंडिविजुअल क्लाउड यस दैट्स अप टू यू बेस्ड ऑन व्हाट इज द यूजर रिक्वायरमेंट और द कस्टमर रिक्वायरमेंट अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन मेक द डिप्लॉयमेंट yeah so this is the first part so when you in, uh, bootstrap your uh, controller node which is the first controller node uh, you get the kubernetes uh, no you, you get uh, all these components installed and you have this packet manager helm and uh, armada for uh, deploying kubernetes cluster and openstack so there also they made it very easy using your helm charts you can easily deploy your kubernetes cluster first and uh, uh, the second diagram uh, the just addition is this open stack on top of it if you look at the open stack again it is containerized on the same kubernetes cluster all your nova keystone all those core services of open stack will be a container the container space so it is giving you the scalability right that is it and you can as you shall uh, you have open stack and kubernetes on bare metal so you get the best performance of the hardware when you run the kubernetes cluster in the bare metal and you have the best of open stack also where you have that scalability which you will not be having unless it is containerized right so uh having said that it is a zero touch deployment this is just a high level of how what is the process uh uh which happens so the very first node which you install uh starting as and designated as a controller uh, it's just a iso file which you can download from starling x website and you can install the iso file boot it uh and install it may take like say a uh, five minutes time and you get the login prompt okay on the login prompt you just need to change the system and password and that's it done then you need to do the basic networking based on the subnet which you are once you do the subnet i have been uh, uh, send the ip to that controller node immediately what happens is it will uh, auto discover the other nodes in the same subnet okay it will auto discover the uh, other servers in the same subnet and um, if you look at uh, to do all these things uh, um, yeah bootstrap.yaml file is used okay uh, uh, using that uh, it uh, understands what are the uh, ips of other machines okay which needs to be included in this deployment so what auto, auto discovery happens and then uh, uh, you just need to bootstrap and then uh, all your hosts are will be listed out and uh, but it will be in locked locked uh, state you have to designate each of those node saying this is my storage node one this is my storage node two or this is my compute node one this is my compute node go one by one and uh, the moment you designate i give the personality to that server what happens is your controller actually pixie boots the same iso file will be used and it does a pixie boot and uh, installs the starling x in the other nodes and uh report it back to the controller then you will see the status as locked it is added to the uh, deployment but it will be in a locked state so there will be command to unlock once you unlock the node gets restarted and it will automatically join the cluster you can call it a cluster okay so the, uh, if you look at this these steps right power on the server and pixie boot from the controller node the controller discovers the servers that is auto discovery part the user selects the personality of those nodes and designates whether controller or controller 1 controller 2 whatever 
uh, storage node one, storage two, node two, like that. Designate the mo the moment you designate and it installs the server. I mean the software. It is the same ISO file. There is a single ISO file. There is nothing. Uh, there is no different ISO file for uh, uh, storage nodes and computer nodes. One single ISO file. It gets installed and then uh, automatically it uh, does the configures the interfaces uh, and all uh, networking. And then once unlocked, yes, you have the Star Linux up and running. <coughs> These are small screenshots. I just got the screenshots. So the moment you install, right, you, you are very familiar with these kind of scenes screens and you install an operating system, this is what you see. You just need to select all-in-one or a standard controller configuration. So all-in-one means for uh, POC and all, how that's where you start. And if you want to go with the uh, standard configuration, that is you have a bigger idea of setting up a distributed cloud, then you select the standard configuration and it, uh, set up the first machine as controller and then proceed with the steps which we said and then you get the complete setup done. And again, if you look at the UI also, right, after installation, you will have the familiarity with the horizon. You see the same horizon is there, but it will be a little more, you will have more of a new options. As I said, we have uh, the complete lifecycle management also involved, I mean uh, included, right, which we don't have uh, in OpenStack. So you have uh, far more menus and menu items uh, than Horizon, uh, wherein from this, uh, from this console you can manage the complete central cloud itself and the edge from here. The complete lifecycle management can be handled from this way. Yeah, I, 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 as I said, it's an introduction, so just to get an idea, so when, when we talk about, when we start looking at some technology, right, some, we may get scared, you know, uh, Starling with the name, Starling X and all, so, but we would have already worked in many of those parts, so that's why I started with those questions. Whoever is uh, familiar with Kubernetes and OpenStack, yes. You are right away starting with starting with Starling X. Just need to understand what, how much of easiness they have brought in, so much of automation has happened, which is not there in. But still, you can easily relate with things, what is going on, and you probably you can understand. So the Starling X documentation is also good, which is go through that documentation to understand more in detail how this deployment is done. Specifically, this is for a particular use case, and if you look at uh, Starling X, is most widely used in uh, uh, the telecom vertical. I think that's Starling X is uh, telecom's favorite uh, these days. Okay, so we can see more of Starling X deployed in telecom uh, vertical, uh, wherein they deploy their VNFs on top of. So it's more suitable to edge and telecom uh, vertical. So yes, that's all I had uh, for today as an introduction. Uh, I'd be happy to take any questions from your side.